Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. I am Dr. Ram. Today in this explain why series, we are going to discuss why is glycated hemoglobin that is HbA1c measured in diabetes mellitus. Previously in diabetes mellitus, only the fasting blood sugars and the postprandial levels were measured. But now this HbA1c or the glycated hemoglobin is measured routinely and it gives a better estimate of the blood sugar levels. Glycated hemoglobin in diabetes mellitus. Now let's try to understand what happens to the hemoglobin in diabetes patient. Normally the hemoglobin that is the hemoglobin A which is the adult hemoglobin has two alpha chains and two beta chains. Two alpha chains and beta chains. What happens when their glucose level starts to increase excessively? Whenever their glucose level starts to increase excessively, the glucose molecules, the glucose molecules gets attached to this beta chain. Whenever this glucose molecules gets attached to the beta chain, it is called as glycated hemoglobin. Now we understood what is glycated hemoglobin. Now let's try to understand this hemoglobin is usually present in the RBC. So whenever this glucose is attaching to the beta chain of the hemoglobin, this also will be present till the RBC dies, which is normally around 120 days. So this glycated hemoglobin usually is present in the circulation for 120 days. So if I evaluate this HbA1c level, it will give an approximate estimate of glucose level over the period of three months. Now let's think and understand why this is important. It is very important because a patient who is going to give blood test for diabetes is going to cut down his calories for the last few days. So the values might be misleading. But here it will give an overall estimate for the glucose level approximately from weeks to months. So this is a better parameter and it is measured. And we should know where exactly in this beta chain it is getting attached. It is getting attached in the terminal valine, in terminal valine in each beta chain. In both the beta chains, the excessive amounts of glucose starts to accumulate and survives the till the lifespan of the RBCs. Thus, this HbA1c will reflect the integrated blood control over the lifespan of RBC which is around 120 days. This is referred by the layman's as average blood glucose of 3 months. But now we know it is the glucose level that is measured over the period of weeks and months. In 2011 itself, WHO has advocated this HbA1c in the diagnostic criteria of diabetes mellitus. Previously, it was only the fasting blood sugar and prosprandial was taken. Whenever the fasting blood sugar levels are more than or equal to 126 ml milligram per deciliter, it was considered as diabetes or the 2 hour postprandial. After meals, 2 hour blood sugar levels, if it is more than or equal to 200 milligram per deciliter, it is considered as diabetes. Right now, this HbA1c is considered a another parameter whenever the levels go beyond more than or equal to 6.5 percentage it is also considered as diabetes mellitus and one more criteria is if the patient is having symptoms diabetes symptoms plus the random blood sugar the random blood sugar levels are more than or equal to 200 milligram per deciliter then also it is considered as diabetes mellitus so either of these three categories or Symptoms with the random blood sugar will give us the diabetic status. Thank you for listening. Hope it's clear. If you have any doubts, drop in the comment section. I'll be happy to make a video on it.